fabulous. All right. It is March 4th. Um, I definitely had to look at the calendar because I was totally disoriented right there. <laughs> so it is March 4th. It's our team call night and it's always nice to see you guys. I know it's late and I know you guys are all getting up early, but having team calls is something that we still we think is really important and just connecting. And lately, Dana and I have been trying to find guest speakers for our calls that we feel like speak to what our team needs. Um, and so we have some awesome calls lined up and tonight I'm really excited to introduce Jess McKinley who is here on the call right now um, and I was gonna do an intro and she sent me one and it was like the cutest perfectly well written thing so um, Jess and I have met through the Difference Maker movement she is part of our grander upline um, but she's really kind of made a name for herself in branching out and um, considered considers herself a happiness scientist, which I think is so cool. Um, a life and business coach for early stage and aspiring entrepreneurs. Um, within the Beachbody community, she is a lifetime one star coach. Um, and she is a mama to Calvin, who is like the same age as Ben. He's a little three-nager tornado. Um, and it's cool to see them. She is a, um, he is bilingual, which is really cool because Jess is bilingual. And um, she's the host of the What's Happening podcast. Um, and she considers herself an all-around creative weirdo, which I would not agree with weirdo, but <laughs> we all have our own little things. So I invited her on because I've just been watching her kind of branch out in her social media and be doing these calls and bringing the energy. And we were just kind of talking about that and how I thought that topic would be perfect for us as we continue to dig into these vital behaviors and things like that, but really like kind of get down to a deeper mean, you know, deeper um, understanding of what it means to be successful as an entrepreneur, no matter where we're at in our business, things like that, um, and what we can do to um, just succe succeed a little bit more, excel a little bit more, um, and what that looks like in terms of bringing our energy. So Jess, feel free to share about a little bit more about your story and introduce yourself, but thank you for coming on. I know you do, um, one-on-one -on -one coach calls and it is a business that you run. So we are so appreciative of your time and you volunteering your time for us and your information. So I'm excited to hear from you. Oh my gosh. Thanks so much for having me on. Honestly, I had said to myself, <clears throat> I'm done doing team calls because essentially like I, I literally spend all of my time creating content for now, like either paid speaking engagements or one-on-one -on -one coaching and whatnot. And then when Annalise asked me, I was like, listen, on the down low, this that I'm going to present to you guys, I spent a long time putting together for a paid ma guest masterclass I did for Beachbody coaches a couple of weeks ago. So this is just going to be a lot of uh, really high level info that, uh, that I took from both my experience as a Beachbody coach and then also from a lot of the uh, coaching principles that I teach my one-on-one -on -one clients that own all sorts of businesses. And some of my clients actually also, I met from the Beachbody world and they have since gone on to buy flower shops and be financial advisors and um, be photographers and all these things. So this is a sales conversation that convert no matter what you're doing, whether Beachbody is your full-time thing or your part-time gig, you're going to be able to use this in everything. But it's so funny because when um, the original person who asked me to put kind of together this, this sales conversation asked me to speak, she was like, yeah, can you talk about sales? And I was like, awesome. I love sales. I was like, sales is my jam. What, what are, what is everyone kind of saying that they need when it comes to sales? And she was like, well, everyone just really is afraid to come off as spammy or annoying and salesy. Does that, is that something that you guys hear like across your team that like comes up like your new coaches or whatever, or even you have that? Yeah. <laughs> I see some hands raised from the side. Um, yeah. And I was like, well, now I can understand why there might be some blocks in what we're experiencing in our results. Because when I think of sales, I think of more than just like a used car salesman. I'm like, salesy shouldn't be a negative term. It should be a positive term because people, all the people that I look up to are good at sales. They're good at selling 
their ideas, their products, their services themselves. They are the types of people that are the best at using language to communicate on a high level. I love language so much that I decided to learn it in a whole nother language to communicate my ideas with a whole nother category of people, right? It's like, it is such a tool that I realized that once you have this ability to be able to sell, you can be more confident. You're able to be more present and curious about the other person that's on the other end of the conversation. You have the ability to connect and relate really well. And you really have limitless possibility. You have a lot of power because there's nothing that you cannot um, get across, right? Um, so I also love the transaction of goods for money. I'm like not ashamed at all to receive money for all of the things that I offer. And that was definitely true when I was a beach body coach. I mean, I think, think about it. When, raise your hand if you have an Amazon Prime membership. Okay, a lot of people. Would you recommend that to your friends? Yeah, that shit is $100 before you even buy anything. You don't even get anything and it's $100. But you don't hear moms across America like freaking out about the cost of, of Amazon Prime because we understand how valuable this is. And as coaches, we should be giving so much value that in return, when you finally do talk about money, they're so ready to just like throw their money at you because they they really understand that what you're offering them is value because they've already seen it, right? So um, you need to make it obvious that your process, sorry, is someone, I don't know if that was an accidental unmuting, but if you have something to say, just let me know. Or if I'm missing it in the chat, Annalisa, like stop me because I have a tendency to just keep stopping. Okay, so make it a pro part of your process to constantly be adding energy. And I didn't say adding value, even though that's what every coach preaches is like add value, add value, which of course I agree you should add value. But I think sometimes value is confused or synonymous with information and education. And in terms of sales, information is the opposite of energy. And when you want to make a sales transaction, I'm going to show you what things and what conversation points add energy to a conversation and to the recipient of the conversation and what things zap and suck the energy right out of a conversation. So there are obviously going to be some things that you are going to have to um, talk about that are informative and that information is also important. I'm not saying like, don't tell them anything about what you're selling them. Just be like really psyched and then surprise them with whatever it is. No, obviously you need to have some energy, but it needs to be a balance and it, it should like be a flow of constantly like a little bit of energy, information, a little bit of energy, information, energy, information. It's like a ping pong game that ends with everybody winning. Okay. So now I do have a little bit of a, can I share my screen? I have a PowerPoint. I don't typically like to do PowerPoints. I don't like to be a caption of things, but I will for you guys. Can you see that? Cool. Okay, so this is me standing in front of a mall. My boyfriend took this picture. It's very, very cool. Energy information, the secrets to conversations that convert. So, okay, it's not what you say or how you say it. It's how you feel when you say it. This is something that I say to my clients all the time, and they know what I mean, because have you ever approached a, your like power hour? I don't know. Do you guys do power hours? Is that your way of, yeah, you know what it is at least when you're approaching your power hour and you're feeling like, I'm at success club zero. I have to do this. Like, and you're just like not in the mood. And then you're like, or you're thinking about and following up with this person and you feel like, oh, like, I don't know, are they finding me annoying? I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to be annoying. And you feel like that before you start the conversation, that's going to create a result for you. So scripts in the model. Um, raise your hand if you use scripts. This is not a trap. I don't find scripts either bad or good. I'm just kind of curious for what I'm going to be talking about. Okay, so like some some types of scripts of your own, maybe. Okay, so I definitely had some scripts that I would give to beginners. I've tried it all, but 
Um, generally scripts are just a way for you to be able to help beginners or people who haven't experienced a certain um, conversation have something to say when um, a certain objection comes up or so that they know how to break the ice and they should be using it to, um, to make it so that it feels like their own, right? But the only problem with scripts is not that there's anything like wrong with it. It's that if you hand over a script to someone, your team, or you are using it yourself and you do not teach that a script is an action and it's words that need to be fueled by proper premium emotions. If you don't have the emotion to go with the words, it's going to come across as spammy and gross and it's not going to feel good, right? Because you need to have that feeling first. Their response is never going to make you feel better than you already feel going into the conversation. You need to, your feelings come from your own thoughts and you need to create that yourself. So that's what I have to say about scripts, especially because I think it's such a shame. Like I think Beachbody is the greatest MLM on the planet and I fully still will always drink Shakeology. I like usually have some sort of a Shakeology cup like on my desk, but don't happen to right now. Um, but I think it's a shame when people are ex on the receiving end of a script when the other person just doesn't know how to feel about it. So we'll teach you how to do that. Okay, this is the model. Raise your hand if you're familiar with Brooke Castillo or the Life Coach School podcast. Woo woo, it's Anna knows. Yeah, Mary knows. Okay, cool. So if you don't know, no big deal. Um, Brooke is my coach and trained me as a life coach. And so I use the model and you guys can use the model on yourselves. It's a very helpful tool. It is essentially this, that your circumstances trigger your thoughts, your thoughts drive your feelings, your feelings drive your actions, and your actions produce your results, right? So um, when we say that it's not what you feel, it's how, or how you say it, it's not what you say or how you say it, it's how you feel when you say it. Obviously, that's because your feelings are where you're taking all of your actions from, and that's going to create your results. So, oh, wait, uh, okay, no, we're good. So, um, this is what an unintentional model might look like. So, in your case the, of the example we were talking about before, if the circumstance is that you're inviting to a challenge group and you're in your power hour and you're inviting to a challenge group and your thought is, I don't want to come across as spammy, that's going to create a feeling of feeling worried. And it might feel really subtle and it might actually be something that feels normal to you because you've been feeling this every time that you've ever approached a power hour in your life. So you're like, what? That's just how I feel when I power hour. No. It's how you feel when you think the thought, I don't want to come across as spammy. You feel worried. And then when you feel worried, you might do one of the following things. You might not do all of these, but you might do one of them. You might word vomit on them. You might invite too soon. You might avoid the invite altogether. You might not follow up because you're feeling worried. So why would you follow up? Because it doesn't make you feel good to follow up because you think that following up makes you feel bad. So you're not going to do it. The truth is, what the feeling is coming from the thought in the first place. You can't escape that no matter where you go or no matter how many people you invite. And then the result when you do that, that you create is that you do end up coming across as spammy. Your thought will always end up in your result line. So this just says your business, which would fall into the result line of the model is always a reflection of your thoughts. So just kind of know where your business is at and then Get really intentional about figuring out what thoughts are you have you been thinking up until this point that's creating the business that you have currently. Let's say your business is stagnant. It's probably because you have some thoughts that have gotten you until this point, but you haven't found new thoughts that are going to get you to the next point, right? Or let's say that you have a business that's growing. It's because you have maybe some thoughts that are just useful that are working for you. And if you have a business that has, isn't going in anywhere at all, obviously those thoughts aren't useful. So how do you want to feel when, before inviting to a challenge group or the coaching opportunity? Feel free to like type in the chat. I'm going to find where I can see the chat, but like just name one emotion that would be your ideal emotion for how you would want to feel before, and um, there it is, chat. 
confident, enthusiastic, pumped. I love pumped, confident. Yep. Yeah. Those are all like kind of similar vibrations, right? You're like confident, excited, pumped. Awesome. Those are all really great. How about also, these are just some that I wrote down that I like to feel sometimes inspired when I'm feeling really inspired. So coming off of a really great team call or coming off of listening to an awesome podcast or whatever it is, or talking to my upline and I'm feeling awesome. That's when I want to go or whatever I'm thinking. I want to feel curious. I want to feel grateful for the results that I've created with Beachbody in my life. Even if those are just physical or just my connections in my community, I might want to feel fun. I just like to feel fun and funny before I go into a power hour because when I'm feeling fun and funny, it's going to be more fun and funny for the person on the receiving end of the conversation. I want to feel caring. I want to feel like a beginner. We're going to talk about that in a second. I want to feel casual and relaxed. Like I'm going to invite someone to my birthday party or just to go get some pizza or whatever. Um, and those are some other feelings that you can play around with feeling because sometimes like it's hard to create the energy of psyched or excited. So I like to always have like a couple of different vibrational, um, ones like psyched, excited. Those are like on the same ones, confident and like proud or whatever on the same kind of vibrational level. Curious is a different one. Relaxed and casual are different. They can all create good results for you. Um, beginner's energy. So people are asking, like, how is it possible that you could have a beginner coach come in and like hit success club 10 in the first month that ever happened on your team or you've seen it where you're like, they don't even know how the, my challenge tracker app works yet. Like they don't even know all of the ingredients to Shakeology. Like how are they doing so well in this business? And I can't seem to like get it together. Well, it's because beginner's luck is not a thing and beginner's energy. Yes, Mary Page. And I did as well. I hit emeralds in three days, in my first three days as a coach. I didn't know what I was doing. I hadn't even gotten my Shakeology bag yet. <laughs> like literally, I didn't even know what it tasted like yet. I was just so psyched because my upline, who's Meredith Kelly, I don't know if any of you guys know her, um, she was so psyched. And I was like, she's like, I'm psyched. We're doing this thing. And I just had all the energy. And I talked to these people in that same energy. And I was like, let's do this together. I was speaking to them from where I was at, right? Amazing. So you can be a beginner with energy and not know very much and have a lot of success. But you cannot have a lot of information and zero energy and have any success. So I always say like energy over information for sure. Now, worrying is the opposite of positive energy, right? It is not only negative energy, but it's kind of like a way to use your imagination that just creates negative results for you. And I like to call it negative goal setting, which it's like, okay, the, that self-fulfilling prophecy, right? yeah. self-fulfilling prophecy of when you don't want to come across as annoying and you're worrying about coming across as annoying, then you come across as annoying. It's like, you know what's really annoying? People who are constantly accidentally apologizing in their pitches to me. Like I find that they're like, sorry to bother you, or like this is how it might come up. I just wanted to see if, or okay, let me know. It's no problem if not, but, and then the invite. Sorry to bother you again in a follow-up. These are the actions that will show up in your model when you're feeling worried. So just be mindful of those things that I can spot them from a mile away. So if someone's trying to sell me something, then they, they talk to me like this. I'm like, you're opening yourself up to a lesson in sales. <laughs> Come to Annalise's team call. Okay. Uh, conversation fuel. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys some basic, like what I said in the beginning, um, conversation fuel, and then some basic conversation zaps. So you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So compliments. So obviously this one's like pretty obvious. If you're going into a conversation and you want the energy to be high, um, I love to compliment people. I love to compliment people that I are strangers that I don't want anything from. So this is a very easy thing for me to do. And I, I found that beach body coaches tend to be like this in general, 
the type of person that is has no problem complimenting the woman in front of you at the deli lines like leggings like you're like girl yes practice this all the time because it'll come out more naturally than in your conversations but make sure it's authentic of course don't just be like oh my god I love your skirt where did you get it it's the ugliest laughing skirt I've ever seen no we're not gonna all about that life we want to make sure it's a compliment that feels genuine for you because again your feelings are going to create your results so um, for me, like this is anytime I see anyone that is doing anything at the same time as they are raising a kid, I'm like, how do you do it? I'm just like complimenting them all the time. Anyone who is a morning person, I'm like, you, and you're waking up at 5 a.m. Like when you say that, it's just like, I'm like, yes, like I, I want to praise you for that. Um, being an example for your kids, anything that you see in their profile, of course, compliments, you get it. Number two, commonality. So um, one way that I used to always find, even if I think people, my team used to always say to me like, okay, but like, how do I find something in common with this person? Like they literally, like I have nothing in common with them. They're so boring or they're so X, Y, Z. Every once in a while, you'll find a person like that, that you're just like, they have blah, there's like no personality. So one way that I would find a commonality always in the process is like, okay, the conversation is very information heavy because we don't have a lot of sense of humor in common, whatever. And I would say, oh, like uh, you get a month of Shakeology with the challenge pack in your first month. What one do you want to try? I'm a chocolate fiend over here. And they would be like, oh yeah, like chocolate sounds good. And I'd be like, I knew I liked you. Chocolate, you, me, chocolate. Awesome. And even just that one little thing, it seems very subtle, but it is very important for people feeling connected to you. It builds that what you always hear, I'm sure is no like and trust. Um, so find a commonality, even if it's something as, as small as um, the flavor of Shakeology that they are gonna get. Curiosity, so make sure that you're digging deeper. If someone is telling you, um, if you ask a question and they, let's say for example, you're asking about um, their day and you're like, oh, okay, so there's like a tons of different programs. Um, how much time do you really wanna commit to this? And they're like, well, like I'm super busy. Like I probably could only do 20 minutes. I'm not just, just gonna take that. I'm gonna be like, oh, like you only have 20 minutes? Like I hear you. Like do you, also, while you shower, you also read a book. And while you're driving, you're also painting your nails. Because I'm like you, a multitasker. It's like, dig, be curious, make it fun, make it light. And really don't just take what they're saying at like face value. The quicker you're able to ask a deeper question, the more they're going to feel like really you're taking the time to get to know them. And you're not just in it for a transaction. It doesn't take more time to ask I mean, you think it takes um, more time to to ask another question, but truly it'll take you less time because the, the closing sales part of the conversation is going to be so quick and easy because you've already done the heavy lifting in the beginning, right? Okay, so humor. I mean, I'm all about the mom jokes. I'm not the funniest person on earth, but I think any way that you can kind of lighten up the situation is going to add more energy to the conversation. So like if someone is telling you about like their goals and they're saying, okay, like I just want to, you know, lose weight. I have all these weddings coming up or whatever. And you're like, oh my gosh, are you like a bridesmaid? It's like, yeah, like, damn, I was in 11 weddings this year, like 27 dresses, like, except don't look as good as Katherine Heigl. Like I don't, whatever way you have to do it, I don't particularly self-deprecating humor is not my fave, but you know, figure out, figure out a way for you to keep it like gifs, every other word if you can. Gifs will add energy right into a conversation. Memes, gifs, emojis, bring it. Fun facts. So make sure they're actually fun, but one that I like to also like slide in there all the time that I used to use all the time was that like you want them to be educated slowly in snippets about Shakeology or about, you know, the product, but you can do it in a way that is fun, funny or whatever. So with Shakeology, I used to always say, oh my gosh, I get it. Like you're, you need more convenience in your nutrition. Cause if someone's telling you they struggle with their diet, I'm like, yes, I love Shakeology and will never stop drinking it because it's like six servings of salad disguised as brownie batter. 
And that one sentence, I can use it educates them, but it doesn't suck. It actually like both educates them and adds energy to the conversation, right? And then with humor too, like I used to always just be like, just you wait until you're working out with Joel. Like it'll be a punishment and a reward at the same time, right? So you're like assuming the clothes and you're kind of painting this picture of like when they, even if they haven't said yes yet, and you're still telling them the information about it. That's also another little sales 101 for you is assuming the clothes, always having a conversation as if they've already said yes. And as if you're already painting them this picture in which you guys are having so much fun with sweaty hat Joel in the future. Okay. Vulnerability. Um, so that was always something that was easy for me. I mean, people like to say like, oh, it's easy to be vulnerable when you're a mom talking to a mom. But like I was a beach body coach before I was mom and while I was pregnant and after being a mom and through a divorce and all the things you guys like, and as a single mom and, and I'm telling you, there's no stage or of like perfect life where you can be cannot find something to be vulnerable about. Even if you're just saying that like, oh, I still sometimes have these moments where I'm, I am not proud of how much I care about what the scale says. So like, we're going to actually, I was thinking about having a scale smashing party at the end of the month. If you want to do that with me, like it's, it, and just figuring out a way for you to tell your story so that again, you're showing that you're in the trenches with them as you really are in the challenge groups and you're showing them that like it, that you can um, learn something from them, which will be another thing. Number eight. So sorry, the chats. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Um, a compassionate call out. So this is something that I have to do as my job as a life coach, but I found that it was so easy to transition into life coaching from beach body coaching because you're essentially a life coach <laughs> as a beach body coach, right? You have to call out people on their BS and you, the most powerful way to sign someone on when you're having this conversation, not just with a challenge pack, but also with coaching is to coach them through the conversation before you're actually their coach. So it doesn't mean like, oh, my coaching of you starts once you pay me money. No, you're coaching of them. Show them the value that you can add by coaching them through a transformational process before they even give you a dollar or before they even sign on to your team, right? And you're saying, um, for example, um, I can tell that your health is important to you. It can be really emotional to commit to this, especially if we're worried we're going to fail. I just want you to know that like you're not alone. This comes up with so many of... Um, my clients, like it can be really emotional. You feel like, oh, it's just fun. I'll just do this thing. And then a lot is coming up. So can I just ask you what's coming up for you? So I can kind of make you feel at ease that you're not alone in this and that there's not someone else that isn't in this community that you're going to love that has had this exact feeling that you're feeling because you, you can kind of sense when someone's interested and then they start to back away. I had a mom that was telling me all this stuff in our beginning conversations about how her daughter was gaining weight and she felt like it was her fault and she led a horrible example with what to eat and she doesn't work out and now she wants to do this for her daughter and for her blah 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 and then when the price comes up you know she's like I just don't know if I could do it right now and I'm like let me ask you this I know that your health is really important to you I know that your daughter's health is really important to you can I just ask you what's coming up for you because I know it's not about the price there is no price tag that you can put on your daughter's health and your health and it's like you can say that and when you have the feeling is in the right place and the intention is in the right place, there is nothing that you cannot say. I have no qualms asking anyone anything because the truth is the truth and you know what it is, right? You can feel it before they even say it. So be willing to have a compassionate call out conversation before you're that coach. Yeah. What's coming up for you? That's what I ask almost always when I'm, so my group coaching program in life coaching is $3,000, much higher than $140 or $160. And when I'm talking to someone about it, it's like, I can tell they're so interested that like, I'm not even worried about the money anymore because I know it's worth it. And all my clients are entrepreneurs and they make that money back. But I'm like, if they start to doubt it after the money, I'm like, can we just talk about like what's coming up for you? Because there's no amount of like, oh, I just want to wait until my taxes come back and whatever. I used to pull that shit all the time. It's like, people are probably saying that to you right now, right? It's the season where people are like, oh yeah, I'll do it next month. Like my taxes, it's like, 
oh, what are you going to do for the, all, this whole month? You're just going to like eat bonbons on your couch? Like you were just telling me about how you wanted to break this cycle. Raise up your commitment and get some skin in the game, right? It'll, that money will show back up for you and your life in a more powerful way than you could ever imagine. So sorry, it took a long time on that one, but that one's really important because I want you to feel like you can do that. You're qualified to have a compassionate call out with anyone. Then questions with simple or fed answers. Okay, so this was huge. I found for my team, they were asking a lot of open-ended questions. Conversation fuel, so the opposite of conversation fuel is a conversation zap. When you're asking an open-ended question, like, tell me your goals. And eh, that's gonna like suck the energy right out of the conversation, number one, because they have to think. And people don't feel like thinking. They want you to do all the thinking for them. And then they just want kind of options. They need you to guide them, right? And so questions with simple or fed. So one that I like to use is, I don't want to here, right? Yeah, one that I like to use is kind of, okay, so tell me a little bit about your goals. Uh, like what's your what's your main goal? And then in parentheses, I'll put like, fat loss, muscle building, general toning, you just want more energy, blah, 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 etc. And then usually their answer is like, all of the above, LOL, help. Like, I can't even tell you how many people say that to me in which I'm like, girl, send me all your problems. I'm here for you. Well, let's do it. But if they choose one, then it's like easier for them. They're like, oh, okay, clearly. And you just save them all of this time and energy that they would, even if you'll find people, you're like, no, no, no. I have people that will sell tell you their life story in like a whole three paragraphs they might do that but then after that they're drained from having done that so they kind of are almost checked out of the conversation so by the time you get to money which really sucks the life out of a conversation then you're like doomed because this person is like over there just dead doesn't want to be in the conversation anymore so make sure you're giving them options simple yes or no questions or fed answers um, make them the expert. So everyone loves to feel like the expert, even if it's something really simple as like, oh my gosh, like, by the way, I love your purple sports bra that you posted. Like, I need to get that. Where is that from? Yeah. Okay. We're going to be twins tomorrow on our purple sports bras. Yes. Like figure out a way that you can ask, like, where did you get that? So that they can feel like they're giving you something energetically. This is kind of like a psychology I don't want to say trick that sounds like it's a bad thing but um it's a psychology tool where some people really do not feel comfortable receiving help from other people you might be one of these people that you don't you like to help other people but you don't necessarily like to be helped well your challengers might be like that and in order for them to feel like energetically they can receive all that you are helping them with they want to also feel like they're still strong and it doesn't make them weak so a simple way to do that is kind of be like and by the way like fitness motivation totally my thing but nutrition like we're all figuring it out together i noticed you do hello fresh oh my gosh like tell me about that or like whatever you see on their page ask them you know in what ways have they found success or having it be an expert thing like like that you're just curious how they did, I don't know, the DIY thing that you saw on their Pinterest page. It's like whatever it is, but make sure obviously that you actually care about it. But even if it's as simple as like, where what is your where did you get your like dog's jacket? I want one for my dog so they can match. Like whatever it is, like that will make them feel a little bit, it'll give um, fuel to the conversation. Okay. And then ending the conversation. Wait, where's the 10? There it is. Okay. Ending the conversation. This one sounds weird, but I promise you that this was a mistake that a lot of my clients were making. So you guys have heard of forming. Is that still a thing? Forming, right? Family orienta or orientation, no, occupation, <laughs> family occupation. It's been a while, you guys. Recreation and mission. So the way I like to teach it is for dot, 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 ellipses, and the conversation, me. The, miss, the message, the invite, actual thing, doesn't come until the second day. Now, there are going to be some exceptions to the rule in which this person is literally coming to you and they're like begging you for a challenge pack and a coach. And if that's your problem, fine. But if that's not your, the case and you're having just conversations the normal way that you would have conversations, 
you need to be able to end the conversation, especially nowadays. People are so like on the defense from being sold things by MLMers that they're just like out to make you be this inauthentic human being. And that's not who you are. You got time. You don't need them, right? You have all of the world that abundantly needs what you have to offer, which is so many things. Each body is not one thing. You know, you have community, you have income, you have health, you have fitness, you have friendship, you have, um, you know, Shanti. That's a joy in itself. Um, but when you can go ahead and have this whole awesome conversation with someone and then be like, you're the person that ends the conversation and you're like, all right, I gotta go. I gotta run. Like gonna go pick up my son. So great catching up. Bye. And then they go on your tracking list and you're like, have had a conversation with them. And then either the next day or two days later, if you're being consistent in your power hours, it will feel so much more fun to go to power hour because you're like, Oh, that person I talked to and had an awesome conversation with yesterday. You're like, Hey, by the way, like I saw this meme that reminded me of that thing that we were talking about or, oh yeah, I knew you were, um, like talking about some, you were asking me about like a salsa dancing class and I found this for you or whatever it is. It's like, I usually find a way to open back up the conversation that had to do with what we were talking about the day before. Or if I have none of that, it's like, it was so great to talk to you the other day. By the way, I don't know if you've seen on my social media, by the way, I do because I can see in my insights um, that I run these challenge groups. I feel like it would be so fun to have your pretty face in there all the time. Is that something you've ever be, be interested in doing? I don't know why that sentence came out. Like it was neither English or Spanish, but I noticed the, the energy and the emotion that I was feeling when I asked that too is like casual and relaxed because I sincerely feel it because I know that I added tons of energy and value to the conversation. And I also know that this party challenge group that I'm inviting them to is pretty kick-ass. So I'm not worried about the fact that I am inviting them because I know that what I'm inviting them to is awesome. And I also know that if they're not interested, then we sincerely had a great conversation and that I did not waste my time because I opened a relationship. And now I've invited them to something that even if they're saying no, it might not be not now, but they can kind of see, oh, hey, like I, oh, it's 9, 12. I was like, wait, did we start at eight o'clock? We started at 8.30. Okay. Still got time. Um, so they, they can see that now they're watching even more intently. They know what it is that you're offering because we think that people know, but a lot of times, like people really don't actually know what you do as beach body coach. They're confused. So just invite them to it and then sit back and the conversation. Now, conversation drainers and zaps, giving them the facts. This is kind of annoying because we have to give them facts. Like you're not here to just be a hype man. Although I'm trying to make it my mission. Um, but transaction of information. So giving them facts about Shakeology or about how BOD works or about program details or anything like that, that's going to zap the conversation. So I want you to understand that like every time you do that, you need to like put a quick antidote on it from the conversation fuel thing. So I'd be like, um, okay, uh, this is the, how BOD works. By the way, I cannot wait for you to come in and like meet the other girls because, and you're using these, um, this curiosity of like, do you, have you, do you typically like to work out with other people? Cause I know I like make weird faces. I like to be in my own room, but I do like that camaraderie of kind of feeling like, oh, I got my workout done. Someone should care. Like, and if it's not Ryan Gosling handing me a medal and an ice cream cone, then at least these other girls should know. So I can get like some likes and someone to like brush my shoulders off, right? So that is either humor, commonality, curiosity, whatever it is after giving them a fact. Number two is two questions in a row from either you or them. So one fact about sales, sales 101, is that the person that's asking the questions is the person that's in control of the conversation. And my team would try and tell me all the time, but no, 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 they're the ones that are asking me the questions all the time. They're asking me about the program or they're asking me about the price or they're asking me. If someone asks me about the price, I'm not afraid to take back control of the conversation. If someone asks me the price right off the bat. They're like, oh yeah, okay, how much is it? 
Have you ever had that happen to you? I love it. I'm like, bring it on. Ask me the price earlier. I dare you. I'm like, well, I could just list you all of the prices of all the possible things, but it would kind of, it would be like a lot of information. Would you mind if I just ask you a couple more questions so I can figure out kind of like the best, maybe two options, and then I'll give you those two options. And then you can kind of decide. No one has ever been like, no, I'd rather you give me 97 prices. Like you kind of make that, you have to a little bit make them feel dumb for trying to like, you know, hustle you. You're like, no, no, I'm in control here. I'm the one asking the questions. <laughs> Sit back, Sally, get ready. So two questions in a row though. If you're asking them a question, they answer. And then you're asking them another question. That's also going to zap the, the energy. You just need to make sure that you're asking them a question. Then they're telling you something listen and respond to what they said as a human being. Sometimes we get so into like, you're like, okay, I got my list of conversation fuel and my list of conversation drainers. And like, I'm just going to go, go, go. And it's like, okay, but you also need to be human and you need to listen and you need to just like hear what they're saying. If, so, if you're like, how's your nutrition? And they're like, oh uh, yeah, like, well, I'm bulimic. And you're like, great. So I think you should do live for it. Like, Yikes, they're not going to be interested in what you're selling. So obviously you need to make sure that you're, you're hearing them and that they feel heard. Um, so ask a question and then when they answer it, put in another one of the conversation fuels and then ask another question. Um, then, sorry. Okay. Open-ended cues. I mentioned that before. I don't need to go over it again, but you understand just like general questions, like tell me about your goals not going to um, add any energy, going to zap energy, getting their details. So this is a necessary evil. Like I said, there are some things that are just going to drain the conversation a little bit. Just be prepared for it and know that you have to handle this in a way that you're adding. So if you ever like, you're like, okay, what's your email? And then you're like, they give you their email and you're like, what's your, um, social security number. You say, hate that. You're like, what's your social security number? And then you ask those two questions in a row and then it's like ghost. And you're like, ah, like the conversation was going so well. Like what's happening, right? Getting their details. So I'd be like, um, what's your email? I, like, and I'll, I'll be like, I'm going to send it to you while we're having this conversation. By the way, tomorrow in our challenge group, we're doing this really fun thing where we lay out our clothes tonight of the clothes that we're going to wear and we take a picture of them. And then if you post in them tomorrow, then I'll send you, I don't know, something fun in the mail or whatever. Or like, I'll send you a picture of me on the beach in Miami next week. <laughs> so you can feel really good. No, but the point is, is that you're kind of, you're, you're distracting them from what you just, the information that they just gave you so that you, do, they don't feel like they're being interrogated and, or in the middle of a human questionnaire. Um, so I say that, and then I, I paint the picture about tomorrow. So I'll be like, get your outfit out while you also get your credit card out. Cause I just sent you that thing to your email. Awesome. What's your shake flavor, right? So you're asking them a question, putting it, um, putting in some conversation fuel, telling them about details. They don't give a fuck about. Okay. This is a big one. I used to do this. Actually, this was like one of my early mistakes, um, that I used to make, which was, I thought that the fact that we worked out from home was something that everyone thought would think it was an advantage. I thought it was so great. I'd be like, if you don't have to commute back and forth to the gym, like when? And what I didn't realize what the, was that there are some humans that just like to work out at the gym. So when I was talking all the time about how like, it's amazing, you'll get to work out at home, you can cancel your gym membership, blah, blah, blah. There were some moms that were like, my time to get away from my crazy children and put them in like, like daycare and I can go and just be by myself at the gym and I like the energy and whatever. And I didn't realize when I was talking about that over and over again, they were kind of being turned off. So you need to make sure that you're first doing probing questions where you're asking them like, okay, so, so by the way, and you're giving information like, um, I love to work out from home, but are you a work from home person or you like to work at the gym typically, or do you not care? And then find out that, ooh, find out that question, trying to tap on the chat. Um, what about bringing up the discount coach option just in general? Um, okay. Yes. I will. I will address that as soon as I address what I just clicked on. Let's see. Yeah. Good question. 
Um, so yeah, use my one liners all up cause I'm not using them anymore. Sadly, I, I miss power hours. I really do. Does that sound weird? Okay. So just make sure though, that you're, you're kind of probing people to see whether or not the thing that you're talking about. So I used to talk all the about, all about how Shakeology was so convenient for me, but then other people were like, clearly there was this one girl that she was like, didn't even have a kitchen. She wasn't going to have a blender or whatever. She was traveling. She wanted just the workouts. And I was just like, wasn't listening and was talking to her about Shakeology and like ultimately realized that I missed out on helping her with what she actually needed. Generally, I just offer a challenge pack. I do, but I think there is some occasions in which you need to really have your ears open. Okay, um, them having to go when the conversation hasn't closed. So I talked about this before, but when they have to go, then they feel bad. You don't like to leave a conversation like open. So if someone tells me they have to go, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, me too. Actually, let's just... Like I immediately, I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to close the conversation, right? Because you don't want them to, again, feel this sense of feeling bad, like they kind of like are leaving you and then they feel weird about coming back to the conversation. So they are subconsciously avoiding it because they feel bad. People like to have things closed. So if you're like, yeah, I got to run too. Actually, let's plan on, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Just check your, check your email and it's cash. Talk to you later. And, or like, hey, do you want me to follow up with you on Friday? Or are you good? Like just have a very clear point in which this conversation is over. What is the next step? Right. Um, okay. So inviting to the discount coach, I'm just going to handle that right at the end because it's like going to take me on a tangent. Mary page. I think it's a great question. Though. Okay. So following up with energy. So, <laughs> um, follow general follow-ups zap a conversation. Um, and I have this meme here because it is something that is very relatable to me. <laughs> um, and I think maybe, I don't know how many of you are moms on this personal call, but, um, I think that following up, I want to make sure that you have good energy when you follow up. If you're following up with the census, just following up to see if you got that email, which I can tell that you did get because I can see that it's in the viewed section, but not the purchase section. It's like, we know, we can see in their, um, in the, what is it called? The share cart, uh, what, what stage they're at, but you don't want to just follow up like that because that is going to zap energy because you're asking them for something, right? You want to give energy to the conversation. So how do you do that in a very simple way? I love to always, like I kind of mentioned earlier, um, find a meme or something. Think of something that reminded me of the conversation that we previously had, or you can follow up in a way. I don't remember what the next thing. Yeah. So you can follow up in a way that is switched up of the style of chat that you were having or the location of the chat. So like, let's say that you guys were communicating back and forth in Facebook Messenger. Um, then if you see their Instagram story, comment on their Instagram story. Just that has nothing to do with Beachbody, right? But it's going to trigger to them, oh, they're going to see it. And like, I'll be like, haha, your dog's so cute. I'm making this up. But like, something a little bit more meaningful. Um, that's meaningful if their dog's cute, I guess. Um, and ha ha, your dog's so cute. And then they're like, oh yeah. Oh, they're like, I know, isn't Fluffy so cute? And I know I have to get back to you. Like I get paid tomorrow, so I will do it, blah, blah, blah. And then you're like, oh yeah, I wasn't even going to ask you about that. But then you have the information that you need to know, right? Or let's say they don't bring it up. They're like, yeah, oh my gosh, isn't he so cute? And you're like, he is so cute. And you're like, it reminds me of that time where you just need to just check your email. No, you could just basically now the conversation is open and you were adding value or you were adding humor, or you were adding energy already. So it feels very natural and normal, more normal than if you were just like, Hey, just checking in, um, to then say like, love is so cute. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to see that cute mug in our, in the background of your sweaty selfies every day. Like, did you happen to check, see the email that I got you? that I sent, like, I know sometimes people, like it goes to their spam felt folder. I, that's one of my one liners that I use all the time. Cause that actually does happen in the share card. Um, but I'd be like, just confirm that you got it. Like, okay, awesome. Like when can I expect you? I want to make sure that I'm getting you set up, but switching up the location or the style of chat. Of course, I know you guys know about voice memos or have you heard about like in-person conversations? Those are really 
human and helpful. I find that like we forget that we can talk to these people in real life. Like I would have conversations all the time with people who were Calvin's friends, like moms, and I would see them at the little gym and then be like, oh yeah, like, and just completely pretend that we didn't have this whole other relationship and conversation online. I'm like, hey girl, like, by the way, like, are you signed up yet? Like, I didn't, I haven't even had the chance to see that if you're signed up yet or not. It's like, yes, you do. You do know. Um, no, bring it up in person, Mary. And this is your opportunity to kind of like really question what is the thought there that it's like, why are you scared to bring it up in person? You do know. Pretending that we're confused is one of the best way to waste our own time. Okay, um, I will address the discount coach thing I didn't forget. Um, selling when you feel blah. Okay, so this is another thing that I get asked a lot is like, but what about when I'm just having a shitty day in my personal life? Like, can I just not invite? And that was like my whole last year, you guys. I just got a divorce, I have a toddler. It's been a rough year for me, needless to say, I was feeling sad a lot. And there are feelings that are negative that we can convert into neutral so that we can take action from a place of neutral. You don't always have to feel positive to take action. And so here are some examples that really helped me over the last year, not only um, builds like keep my business afloat during my divorce, but actually have the most profitable year I've ever had in my life. And it was through being a human being, which is emotional. You're not supposed to pretend that you have, are supposed to feel positive all the time, right? We preach that, but can you actually do it? Can you actually show that being real includes some emotions that aren't like psyched and confident, right? Okay, so when I was feeling sad, I can convert it into feeling vulnerable. It doesn't mean you have to air all of your dirty laundry, but it does mean that, hey, in a behind the scenes conversation, I could just say like, I can't even tell you how excited I am for you to get in these challenge groups because I don't know what I would do without them. Because when I was going through some of the hardest times of my life this year, I'm just telling you like having that community that is just like, pushing you to be motivated and do something good for you is priceless, right? And that is vulnerability in itself and it's true and it feels good to you. Frustrated into determined. So if you're feeling frustrated and pissed that you're a success club zero, you can turn that thought from like, what is wrong with me into like, you know what? Game time, right? Like I, I, I seriously, I need to turn it up because I have some serious goals and I want to show my son what is possible. I want to show him that I mean it when I say that you can be a single mom and literally afford a two bedroom house and a lifestyle that is fun and awesome in New York. <laughs> okay. And so I turn that into determined. Overwhelmed into focused. So overwhelmed is one of those emotions, one of those like things that my clients come to me with all the time. It's like, I'm just feeling so overwhelmed. And what they're trying to tell me is that they have a lot of things on their to-do list. And what I try and tell them is that your feelings don't come from the number of things on your to-do list. Your feelings come from the number of thoughts that are unmanaged in your head, right? Overwhelm comes from three things. It comes from stressful thinking, it comes from poor planning, and it comes from scarcity thinking. It does not come from you having to sell your house and plan a wedding and get your invites. And it's like, I am a single mom. I know about all the things. Like I know about having, like I have three different businesses and I handle it all myself and I am the full-time caretaker of my son. It's like, I have a lot of things. The president of the United States has more things on his to-do list, whether you like him or not, than you do. And his sense of overwhelm is usually a low because high planning. And also like the guy doesn't, he's got an abundance mindset. It's true. Right. Um, okay. So, uh, anxious to excited. Anxious is another word that I don't know if you guys feel anxiety. If you're a human being, you probably have experienced anxiety. Um, but yeah, when, oh, sorry. Um, when you're feeling anxiety, spoiler alert, 
Um, when you're experiencing anxiety, you can like about reaching out to someone like, so I experience anxiety sometimes when I'm about to do like a call, like something like this, like earlier in the day, I was kind of like, Oh, like, I don't really have too much time to prep. I had like a full day and I was like, I hope it's good. I really want this to be good for Annalisa. Like, and I was like feeling a little bit anxious. And then I just decided to be like, okay, fuck yeah. Like I have this and you do whatever you need to do when it's like a little dance party or think certain thoughts. Your feelings come from your thoughts, right? When we go back to that model and all you need to remember, check in on time. It's 930. One more thing. Um, all you need to remember is that it, you can turn those same thoughts of like, can I do this? I don't know. Can I do this to like, let's do this. Let's figure this out together. Right. Are you talk from where you're at and understand that like, whatever your truth is of your circumstances, your thoughts about yourself can be slightly tweaked to create a different emotion. And then uncertain into open-minded. If you're not sure how something's going to turn out, well, then you're not a mind reader, right? Like no, none of us really know how something's going to turn out. I have so much uncertainty in my life. And I, in the beginning of this year, felt myself saying to a lot of people, like, I just have no idea what my life is going to be like this year, right? Because I was getting a divorce. I was like, I just have no idea. I have no idea my finances, no idea my like future, no idea if I'm going to have another kid or not, anything like that. And it's like, well, actually nobody has any idea what their life is going to look like next year. It's a false sense of security. And so when we can just be open-minded and say, hey, if I can use my imagination to imagine worry about what it could look like in a bad way or imagine like all the possibilities that of amazingness that it could be, let's stay open-minded and just be like, you know what? I'm not really sure what my life is going to be like next year, but I'm pretty sure that if I just keep showing up and like leaning into it and taking this action, it's going to, it's going to turn out all right. You know why? Cause it always has amazing. And then desperate into relaxed. If you are desperate for a client and you're desperate for this person to, to convert, I need you to do this last step that, um, most people don't do when they're setting a goal set that goal, understand like success club, rank, whatever your goal is, that's all great. And then set up your thought and your mindset. You know how that important that is, your feelings and what you want to feel going into that conversation, figure out how many power hours you need to do and all that action. And then the last step, let go of the need for it to happen. Because when you feel like you need this person to say yes to you, you are in a scarcity mindset that you need more than you have, that you are not going to be able to find anyone else that could possibly want what you have. It's like, no, I never need anyone to say yes to me if they're not ready. And that energy will help them to ironically want to convert so much quicker than when you really feel like you need them to convert. Okay. And the missing link. So yeah, in, in beach body coaches, especially, you know, the mindset is everything, right? This is why PD is one of the vital behaviors. You know the importance of the actions that you need to take. You know that you need to invite and be a product to the product and do all your power hours and show up to team calls. You know those actions. And you know that, you know, you know all of the results that you want to create. You know the amount of money you want to make per week. And if you don't have that written down, write it down right now. That's super fun. Super fun part of your business that you should definitely have in your in your mind's eye. Then you also know what rank you want and what team leader status or whatever you're going for. Great. But the missing link to scaling your business is your feelings. Nobody talks about it in business. And I talk about it a lot, but I, I think that when you are fueling all that you're doing with the proper premium emotions, there's really like no, no, thing that you cannot achieve. So these are all the ways that you can connect with me. Please add me on Instagram or of course, I know I see Mary just added me um, and go listen to my podcast, which is all about um, scaling and fueling your business through emotional mastery. I break it down talking about all the emotions and where they come from. Mary, we could just have a separate conversation if you want. I know it's late <laughs> about discount coach <laughs> conversation, but uh, I don't know. It, or if you want to just stay on, I'll talk to you. But that is that. Oh my gosh. I loved this. I love you. I've always loved you, but I'm like so obsessed with what you're doing. Um, and 
I will admit I'm, I don't have your podcast yet. So that is what I'm going to do right now when we get off this call. Um, cause what you do is like literally the missing link in like my focus area. Like I'm very like business and like tactics and those kinds of things. But um, at the same time, like all the things that you're saying are all tangible things that I can implement like as soon as tonight when I send messages. So I'm excited to kind of reflect on what I've been doing in my conversations. I'm guilty of some of those things that you <laughs> said were like zappers. So mm-hmm. it's good for me to just, I like took pictures of those slides and I'm just like, yep, gotta remember, don't do that because <laughs> it's true. Okay, like yeah. as soon as you said some of those zappers, I'm like, yeah, that is a zapper. Like, they're Some of that like, is necessary. Like, okay, what's your email now? Now do you want to be like what Mary Page is saying? Like, then at the end of all those questions, you're like, so I also have one more question. Do you want to be a coach? And then you've got to like fill them in with how much that costs or whatever. So um, it's definitely the shorter and more energy and like um, ping ponging between like facts or like the detail that you have to share with them. And then that fun, like lighthearted connectedness in your conversation. So I love that. Yeah, it should be fun. I mean, like, beach body coaching still to this day is, like, one of the most fun jobs I ever had. And I loved having those conversations. And still, to this day, I mean, it is opening relationships because my business is for sure thriving. And I get referrals all the time from clients of mine that were just beach body clients of mine that are now, like, they see what I'm doing and they're still following the podcast or whatever. And they, uh, and they are referring me clients now, even if, like, they don't, they just always liked my you know that person like Sally who's like always liking all of your posts but then you message her and she just like doesn't respond and you're like but I just messaged you you just liked my post like come on like it's okay because like Sally one day will refer your next business (laughs) and like for those of you who are also curious kind of and want to talk on the side of like okay, how can I use Beachbody as like a launching pad for me to have like two brands? I did it all at the same time. And like your Beachbody business doesn't have to suffer. It can be kind of like one thing. Um, that's fun too. Yay. Sally. Does anyone else have questions for guests? Well, I know Mary had a question. Um, so you were asking about discount coaches. Um, so specifically, I guess maybe put it into a one one sentence question because there's so many things about discount coach. What's tripping you up? No, it's, I, I think this would be helpful for everyone to know, like what Annalisa said, like you go through and you don't want to zap a conversation at the end where you're like, oh, well, I got this one extra thing. And obviously like if you are trying to hit diamond or you're trying to hit a certain rank or like, uh-huh whatever it is, we need, you know, coaches in our downline, obviously. And and most of the time these people are coming through as a discount coach, not a real working coach. It's that that question like, well, Hey, if you're going to be doing this lifestyle for a long time, you might want this like discount. So. Yep. So, you know, I love giving those one liners. The one that I use over and over again um, for the discount coach was um, so what do you think? Like, are you based on your conversation that you've had, if you've done your due diligence and you've had that dig deeper conversation and had compassion calls with them, you know, whether this is going to be a lifestyle change for them or whether this is just like something fun and new that they're trying or whether they have a short term goal or not. If this is something that someone has made clear that they are like, okay, like, oh my God, I need this. I really want to kind of make a change in my life or like really want to get X result which is most people, I would say like 85% of the conversations are with people that like really want something out of this, then I would say, um, listen, so what I always recommend is that like you are, if you're committed and you really want results, like you're going to get results at the end of month one, but you're going to get like even more powerful stick with it results within like three months. So what I always recommend is that if you're in it for me, like, are you willing to like kind of stick to this and we'll do like three programs or like you're, you can do this for 90 days. And I ask them that first and they're like, yeah, like I I'm in it. Like I'm already said like, yes. And you're like, okay, then this is what we're going to do. And this is what I just say. I don't give them the option. I say, this is what they're going to do. Um, I'm going to set you up for the discount, um, for the 
I don't even say the word coach. I say like, I'm going to set you up for the discount account. Technically it's a coach, but don't worry. My husband, my ex-husband is a discount coach and I don't let him near anybody. So like, I would just be like, you're, you can, um, you can obviously down the line, if you find that this is something that you want to do great, but otherwise it's just a fancy way for you to be able to save money going forward. If you were just trying to do this for the next 21 days and I didn't really think you were serious about it, I wouldn't even offer this to you, but it's so much easier for you to just like sign up this way instead of like down the line, having to switch you over. And it's like a pretty, I like to do those conversations either like invoice memo. So you can kind of say it really quickly because it's like a mouthful um, or like over the phone or whatever. I mean, if you don't have time, you can type it out, but that's, that's kind of how I say it so that it's not like, so like you think that people want more options, but truthfully and statistically in my happiness science, it's research. It's like people don't want more options. More options give people more opportunity for them to miss out on the other option that you gave them. So it's like, they don't want to make the wrong decision. So you're just saying like, here, you give me this info. Okay. Based on what you just told me, I'm going to guide you and tell you, this is the thing that you're going to want to do. And if they really push back and they're like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I don't even tell them that they're going to have to put in their, their, um, social security number, any of that. If they get to it and they're like, um, or you're following up and they're like, yeah, it was asking me for my social security number. I'd be like, you're a smart cookie. I'm so glad you asked that because like, I'm so alarmed when people like don't ask that. Yeah, no, it's just a tax ID thing that's mandatory for, for um, coaches. Like they have to put it in there, but like, I'm glad you asked. Yeah, it is, it's protected by Oracle, the same company, securities company that protects your banks. So it's equally as safe. Boom, done, shut down. That's perfect. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. And uh, I am so excited for you guys to go out there and, not zap energy and just you know, stop the shit. And me too, me too. I'm so grateful for you coming on and sharing all of this valuable information with us. Um, and I know you're off to Target and yeah, wish we are off to bed for a 5 a.m. wake up. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you for your connecting uh, pages too so people can reach out if they have any follow-ups. Um, and I know we'll be sharing this recording. Oh, are you muted now? Oh, oh no, you're not. For some I reason, saying, I like I, uh, I still do like post um, some beach body things still occasionally for my challenge group. So if you are kind of curious, like the way that I do it, sometimes the other day I did it in like a unicorn onesie. And like, you know, it's always like finding the way that like feels fun for you. Um, and so I still do that. So definitely let's be connected. I love all that. All that. Yeah, I see all you peeps. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and episode two of the podcast comes out tomorrow. It's still very new, but so exciting. I'm so happy for you and so proud of you and all you're doing. And you and Cal and Cutie Patootie. Yeah, you you'll get spammed with pictures of my adorable child. Yes. Yes. Can't wait. Right, guys. Everyone have a great night. Go to bed. Good night, Jess. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody.